Good morning. Are we alone? Do we uh, live in a universe that is populated with many, many intelligent species? Or are we, as human beings, just the only intelligent life uh, anywhere in the universe? The last couple of centuries have been a triumph of modern astronomy. We can now trace back the history of the universe to just seconds after the Big Bang, when our universe began. We can, we can watch the cosmic microwave background and map out the structure of the very early universe. We can track the very first stars that formed in the first few hundreds of millions of years after the universe was born. We can track the formation of galaxies. We understand nearly everything that there is to know about the way that the universe was born and the way that the universe continues to evolve, except for one very glare glaring exception, life. We know that in the very first few hundreds of millions of years after the Earth formed, life arose on our planet. We know that from fossils like these, stromatolites, that were formed by the, the very first organisms that existed on our, our planet, cyanobacteria. So very, very quickly, uh, as soon as the Earth cooled off after its formation, uh, we know that, that life began here. And even more amazing than the fact that a, a self-replicating organism somehow came forth uh, amidst the, the laws of thermodynamics that gov govern our universe, that life evolved fantastic complexity uh, and, in fact, eventually evolved intelligence. Amazingly enough, we now know that nearly every single star uh, in our galaxy hosts a planet. And something like one in five of those stars hosts a planet something like the Earth, uh, at just the right distance from the star to have liquid water exist on the surface. But on any of those planets did life arise? Did, did something similar to what happened on our own planet happen on those other planets? We know that the galaxy is a wash in water. It's a wash in organic molecules and complex chemistry. All of the things that we know were necessary for life to begin on this planet exist in abundance throughout the galaxy. But, but did life ever arise on any of those planets? And even more, more pressing of a question, did that life, if it did arise, did it ever go on to develop intelligence? Is intelligence a common outcome of life? Is intelligence a driven process? Does life proceed towards intelligence for some reason that we don't yet understand? Or is intelligence simply some evolutionary fluke that only happened on one single planet that maybe did develop life? And, and again, even more interesting, if intelligence does arise commonly, how far can technology progress? How advanced could very advanced life become? The universe is nearly 14 billion years old, and our galaxy is something like 12 billion years old. So there could be life out there, if, if it evolved intelligence, that could be dramatically more advanced than the life that we have here on this planet. Now, we don't have any way of directly detecting intelligent life, so we use technology, or can use technology, as a proxy for intelligence. Here on this planet, we have been producing technology that has been emitting signals that would be detectable at very, very large distances, well out into the galaxy, for hundreds of years. These are things like high-power TV and radio transmitters that we use for communication systems here on Earth, radars that we use to map other planets in our solar system, or asteroids uh, that, that we have in our own solar system, and also laser technology. Now, we don't do this yet here on our planet, but it's an amazing fact that if you take our most powerful lasers and our largest mirrors and you pair them together, for the fraction of a second that our most powerful lasers can produce light, they can outshine the sun by factors of a thousand and more than a thousand light years away. We have just announced a brand new program that we think is going to be humanity's best chance ever to answer this question. It's called Breakthrough Listen. It's humanity's boldest attempt ever to determine whether or not we are alone as intelligent beings. It's a $100 million, 10-year project that will use three telescopes to conduct the most comprehensive, sensitive, and intensive search for extraterrestrial intelligence in history. 
We're going to use optical telescopes, one called the Automated Planet Finder that is just about uh, an hour away from here near San Jose at Lick Observatory, and two of the world's largest radio telescopes, the Parkes Telescope in Australia near Sydney and the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia here in the United States. The Green Bank Telescope is one of the world's largest movable structures, and it is, in fact, the largest fully steerable antenna that we have here on this planet. With a telescope like the Green Bank Telescope, we could detect a human-like technology nearly to the center of the galaxy. We're going to search a variety of different types of objects. We're going to conduct a survey of a million stars uh, within uh, about 1,000 light years or so of the Earth. We're going to conduct a, a comprehensive survey of the entire plane of our Milky Way galaxy, and we're going to search 100 nearby galaxies to see if that very, very advanced life might have developed the, the necessary technology to transmit at truly extraordinary distances uh, between galaxies. Let's take a look at how that's going to work. Here's an animation of the Milky Way galaxy. Imagine that somewhere in the Milky Way galaxy, intelligent life arises uh, and begins to transmit. If they did so, uh, their transmissions would proceed at the speed of light uh, out from their star for as long as that, uh, that intelligent life existed. And, and that would form a, a bubble of electromagnetic radiation that we might be able to detect here on Earth. But how long do these civilizations live? They might develop life, intelligent life, and then some technology and a radio signal. But that radio signal will only continue to emit for as long as the civilization lives. But these bubbles of electromagnetic radiation continue out into the galaxy at the speed of light. And here on Earth, we can potentially detect those with our very, very large radio telescopes. So here's the Earth. It's self-transmitting uh, electromagnetic radiation, radio signals. And here are these bubbles of radiation from signals from other intelligences that are sweeping across the Earth. And we can detect those, again, with telescopes like the Green Bank Telescope here. And this is an animation of the, the signal that we might expect to see from, from that civilization. And also with the, with the Parkes Telescope in Australia. And it's not just us that's going to be doing the data analysis. With Breakthrough Listen, there is a, a very key uh, component of the program that will make all of the data that we collect available to the public immediately. It will, in fact, uh, when complete, be the largest amount of scientific data that's ever been made available to the public uh, for any experiment whatsoever. And this is one of the ways that you can get involved in that program with a, an application developed here at Berkeley called SETI at Home. This is a program that you can download on your computer, and when you're not using your computer, when you're you know, getting up to get a cup of coffee, if you take long enough, your computer will wake up, it'll download a little bit of the data that we collected at these giant radio telescopes, and use your computer to do the very computationally intensive processing that's required to detect these very weak signals that we're looking for. And your computer will join with hundreds of thousands of other computers and will, in fact, form the largest supercomputer on the entire planet Earth dedicated solely to hunting for evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. And here's a, 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 a video showing how this, how this process works. Here we see uh, at Berkeley, California, where, where we all are here, uh, all of the data that we collect from these telescopes being sent out to hundreds of thousands of, of volunteers, uh, and then results of those computations being sent back to us at Berkeley. And if one of those little, little blue dots comes from your computer and happens to contain uh, evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence, you too will share in the, in the Nobel Prize that we will surely win. <laughs> But I, I warn you, you have to share it with the hundreds of thousands of other volunteers uh, that participated in the project, so you might only get a, uh, a, couple, of, a couple of nickels. Um, but surely, uh, it would be one of the most uh, remarkable discoveries uh, in the history of, of humanity. So I wanted to take a, a minute to look back uh, briefly at one of the, the still images from the video that I showed you to point out something very, very remarkable about the, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and something that we do uh, in, in this science. So here we see the, the bubbles of electromagnetic radiation coming out from the civilizations that may exist somewhere in our Milky Way galaxy. And these bubbles of electromagnetic radiation 
They have fixed widths. They don't, uh, they're, not, they're not constant. Uh, and that reflects the lifetime of the civilizations uh, that, that might be arising. Um, and this is something that's captured in a, a very, very famous equation in this field called the Drake Equation, named after uh, Frank Drake, one of the pioneers um, of this field. And I promise that this is the most complicated bit of mathematics that I'll show you today. Uh, but it, I think it's worthwhile to take a minute to, to walk through this. So this equation here, n, is the number of civilizations that we might be able to detect. And it's expressed as a product of all of the factors that might go in to the emergence of intelligent life. Our star, the rate of star formation in our galaxy. Fp, the fraction of those stars that have planets. Ne, the fraction of those that are something like the Earth. Fl, the fraction of those that actually develop life. Fi, the fraction of those that actually go on to develop intelligence. Fc, the factor, fra factor of those intelligent species that go on to develop some kind of communication technology that we might be able to detect. But perhaps the most interesting factor in this equation is L, the lifetime of the civilization. How long can an intelligent, communicative civilization actually exist? Now, if we look at our own technology and our own human society, we might ask the question, well, maybe, maybe not very long, maybe only a few hundred years. Can a, a truly advanced technology uh, exist for thousands and thousands of years uh, without destroying themselves? This is something uh, that we're able to probe directly in our experiments to search for intelligent life. We're now just beginning to explore the area around our, our own planet. In 100 years, surely the area around our planet is going to be populated with innumerable satellites, communication technology, perhaps we'll visit the moon again, perhaps we'll have a colony on Mars. Maybe in, in a thousand years, we might actually have permanent colonies in space. We can sort of imagine getting that far with our own current technology. But where might we be in the far future? Can we, as, as human beings, exist long enough to actually travel between the stars? Could, could our technology progress far enough that we could actually become an interstellar civilization uh, sailing between the stars on giant spacecraft? This is, this is the, the ultimate question of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We're searching for life beyond the Earth, but truly what we're searching for is our own future. We're asking the, asking the question, what is the future of an intelligent civilization? How long can they last? This is something that a, a pioneer in this field, Philip Morrison, called the archaeology of the future. Because of the finite speed of light, we're studying civilizations that it, as they were a thousand or maybe 10,000 years ago. Our galaxy is a hundred thousand light years across. So if we detect a signal from a civilization that is on the other side of the galaxy, we're seeing that civilization as it was a hundred thousand years ago. But because our galaxy is so old, many billions of years, it's likely that that civilization we detect is much, much more advanced than we are and has been around much, much longer. So although we're looking at that civilization's past, we may be looking at our own civilization's future. Thank you.